Is there a, is that the source of, uh, if you were able to deconstruct like where some of your best ideas came from, do you, is there a process that's at the core of that? Yeah, like, so some people, you know, walk and think, some people like in the shower, the best ideas hit them. If you talk about like Newton, Apple hitting them on the head. No, I, I, I found out a long time ago, I'm, I'm, I, I process things somewhat slowly. So like in college, I had friends who could study at the last minute, and get an A the next day. I can't do that at all. So I always front load at all the work. Like I do all the problems early, you know, for finals, like the last three days, I wouldn't look at a book hmm. because I want, you know, cause like a new fact the day before finals may screw up my understanding of what I thought I knew. So my, my, my goal was to always get it in and, and give it time to soak. And I used to, you know, I remember when we were doing like 3D calculus, I would have these amazing dreams of 3D surfaces with normal, you know, calculating the gradient. And this is like all come up. It was so, it was like really fun, like very visual. And, uh, and if I got cycles of that, that was useful. Um, and the other is, is don't over filter your ideas. Like, I like that process of brainstorming where lots of ideas can happen. I like people who have lots of ideas. And they but just then just let them a, sit. Then there's a, yeah, I'll let them sit and let it breathe a little bit and then reduce it to practice. Like at some point you really have to, does it really work? Like, you know, is this real or not? Right, but you, but you have to do both. There's creative tension there. Like how do you be both open and, you know, precise? Have you had ideas that you just, that sit in your mind for like years yeah. before the? Sure. It's, a, it's an interesting uh, way to, is generate ideas and just let them sit. Let them sit there for a while. <laughs> I think I have a few of those ideas. Yeah, that was so funny. Yeah, I think that's, you know, creativity uh, discipline or something. For the slow thinkers in the in the room, I suppose. As I, some people, like you said, are just like, like the. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting. Like, there's so much diversity in how people think. Yeah. You know, how fast or slow they are, how well they remember or don't. Like, you know, I'm not super good at remembering facts, but processes and methods. Like in our engineering, I went to Penn State and almost all our engineering uh, tests were open book. I could remember the page and not the formula. Hmm. But as soon as I saw the formula, I could remember the whole method if I if I learned it. Yeah. You know? So it's, it's a funny... Or some people could, you know, I, I just watched friends like flipping through the book trying to find the formula, mm -hmm. even knowing that they'd done just as much work. And I would just open the book, and I was on page 27, bottom <laughs> half, I could see the whole thing visually. Yeah. And, you know. And you have to learn that about yourself and figure out what would what, yeah. function optimally. I had a friend who, who was always concerned he didn't know how he came up with ideas. He had lots of ideas, but he said they just sort of popped up. Mm -hmm. Like he'd be working on something, he had this idea, and he'd be like, where does it come from? But you can have more awareness of it, like, yeah. like, like, like how you how your brain works is a little murky as you go down from the voice in your head or the obvious visualizations. Like when you visualize something, how does that happen? Yeah, it's weird. you know, if I say you know visualize a volcano, it's easy to do, right? You can. And see. what does it actually look like when you visualize it? I can visualize to the point where I don't see the very much out of my eyes, and I see the colors of the thing I'm visualizing. Yeah, but there's like a sh there's a shape, there's a texture, there's a color, but yeah. there's also conceptual visualization. Yeah. Like, what what are you actually visualizing when you're visualizing a volcano? Just like mm -hmm. with peripheral vision, yeah, yeah. you think you see the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's a good way to say it. Yeah, you have this kind of almost peripheral vision of your visualizations. They're like these ghosts. But if you know, if you if you work on it, you can get a pretty high level of detail. And somehow you can walk along those visualizations and come up with an idea, which is. Uh, but, Weird. but when you're thinking about solving problems, like you're, you're putting information and in, you're exercising the stuff you do know, you're sort of teasing the area that you don't understand and don't know, but you can almost, you know, feel, you know, that process happening. You know, that's, that's how I, like, like, like I know sometimes when I'm working really hard on something, like, like I get really hot when I'm sleeping and, you know, it's like, <laughs> I got the blankets throw. I wake up. All the blankets throw on the floor, and, and you know, every time it's while well, I wake up and think, "Wow, that was great," you know. Are you able I've, to uh, to reverse engineer what the hell happened there? 
Oh, sometimes it's vivid dreams, and sometimes it's just kind of like you say, like shadow thinking that you you sort of have this feeling you're you're going through this stuff, but it's it's not that obvious. Isn't that so amazing that the mind just does all these little experiments? I never, you know, I thought I always thought um, it's like a river that you can't you're just there for the ride. But you're right if you prep it. No, maybe. it's 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 all understandable. Meditation really helps. You you got to start figuring out. You need to learn language of your own mind. And there's multiple levels of it, but the abstractions again, right? It's yeah. somewhat comprehensible and observable and feelable, or whatever the right word is. You know, it's yeah, you're not long for the ride. You you are the ride. I have to ask you, hardware engineer, working on your own networks now. Uh -huh. What's consciousness? What the hell is that thing? Is that is that just some w little weird quirk of our particular uh, computing device? Or is it something fundamental that we really need to crack open if we're to to uh, build like good computers? Do you ever think about consciousness, like yeah, why sure, it feels like something to be? I know it's 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 really weird. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean everything about it's weird. First, it's a half a second behind reality, yeah. right? It's a post hoc narrative about what happened. You've already done stuff by the time you're conscious of it. And your consciousness generally is a single-threaded thing, but we know your brain is 10 billion neurons right. running some crazy parallel thing. And there's a really big sorting thing going on there. It also seems to be really reflective in the sense that you, you create a space in your head. Right? Like, we don't really see anything, right? Like, photons hit your eyes, it gets turned into signals, it goes through multiple layers of neurons. You know, like, I'm so curious that, you know, that looks glassy and that looks not glassy. Like, like how the resolution of your vision is so high, you have to go through all this processing. Yeah. Where, for most of it, it looks nothing like vision. Right. Like, like there's no theater in your mind. Right? So, we, we have a world in our heads. <clears throat> We're literally just isolated behind mm -hmm. our sensors. But we can look at it, speculate about it, speculate about alternatives, problem solve, what if, you know, there's so many things going on and that process is lagging reality. And it's single threaded, even though the underlying thing is like massively yeah, parallel. Yeah. So it's it's so curious. So imagine you're building an AI computer. If you wanted to replicate humans, well, you'd have huge arrays of neural networks and mm -hmm. apparently only six or seven deep, which is hilarious. <laughs> And they don't even remember seven numbers, but I think we can upgrade that a lot, right? And then somewhere in there, you would train the network to create basically the world that you live in, right? So like t tell stories to itself about the the world that it's perceiving. Well, create this, create the world, tell stories in the world, and then have many dimensions of, you know, like sideshows to it. Like we have an emotional structure. Like we have a biological structure. And that seems hierarchical too. Like like if you're hungry, it dominates your thinking. If you're mad, it dominates your thinking. Like, and we don't know if that's important to consciousness or not, but it certainly disrupts, you know, intrudes into consciousness. Like, Con so there's lots of structure to that. And we like to dwell on the past. We like to think about the future. We like to imagine. We like to fantasize, mm -hmm. right? And the somewhat circular observation of that is the thing we, th we call consciousness. Now, if you created a computer system that did all things, created worldviews, created future alternate histories, you know, dwelled on past events, you know, accurately or semi-accurately, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's... Will consciousness just spring up, like, naturally? Well, would that feel, look and feel conscious to you? Like, you seem all conscious to me, but I, I don't know. External observer sense. Yeah. Do, do you think a thing that looks conscious is conscious? Like, do you, uh, again, this is like an engineering kind of question, I think, because... Uh, like, yeah, I don't know. if we want to engineer consciousness, is it okay to engineer something that just looks conscious, or is a, is there a difference between? Well, we evolve that is... consciousness because it's a super effective way to manage our affairs. Yeah, yeah, it's right? a social it, it's element. A, yeah, well, it gives us a planning system. You know, we have a huge amount of stuff. Like when we're talking, yeah. like the reason we can talk really fast is we're modeling each other at a really high right. level of detail, and consciousness is right. required for that. Right, and. Well, all those components together manifest consciousness, right? 
So if we make intelligent beings that we want to interact with, that we're like, you know, wondering what they're thinking, you know, you know, looking forward to seeing them, you know, when they interact with them, they they're interesting, surprising, you know, fascinating. You know, they will probably be feel conscious like we do, and we'll we'll perceive them as conscious. I don't know why not, but you never know. <laughs>